let me start by telling you what I'm not going to talk about, which is me. I, I'm not here to talk about my story or tell you about me. I'm really here to talk about you, about us, our story, in effect. The new human beings walking on this planet, the new human currency. We have functionally, over the last hundred years, rewritten the human being. Probably one of the greatest success stories ever. The problem is most of us don't know about it, and we are pretty much completely unprepared for the consequences because of it. Now, let me try to give you a bit of historical context, because I think it's important. We often look forward, we don't often look back. Think about the year 1830, 1820. That was roughly about the time that the railroad became ubiquitous throughout the Western world. I mean, it was available before, but for the average person, they could afford a railroad ticket in and around the turn of 1820, 1830. That functionally meant from the beginning of time, the beginning of recorded history, till about 1820, 1830, human beings barely moved. We barely went anywhere. In fact, you had a greater than 85% chance that you would die within 15 or 20 kilometers of where you were born, educated, and married. Now, if you fast forward to 1920, roughly when electricity became ubiquitous, we did most of that in the dark. So if you think about today in 2017, roughly speaking, less than 100 years, about the amount that we have advanced from turning on a light bulb and actually moving around the world, to conversations around artificial intelligence and robotics and machine learning, you will see that we have moved more in less than 100 years than in the preceding 6,000. So the question is, are we better off? Did innovation and did technology and did the advances that we made as a civilization put us in a better place? Now, if you ask that question to the average North American, 6% would say yes, 94% would say no, we are not better off. The average European, about 10% would say that we're better off. Now, what I'm going to show you is a remarkable change between what we believe and the actual data. We are in a state now where the human being, as we know it, if you took every metric about what we would consider to be achievable and desirable in civilization, we have knocked it out of the park. We have taken most of the major problems that plagued this planet over the last 100 years and completely rewritten them. And I want to show you some of the data from a gentleman named Max Roser at Oxford just to sort of give you a sense of just how far we've come. Let's take a look at life expectancy for a second. We have effectively doubled life expectancy on this planet in less than 100 years, which is shocking. And by the way, that's not a developed country or developed world number. That is across the planet. You'll see the United States as one example, but also India, we've also doubled life expectancy. And that's pretty much true right across the board for almost every country developed or developing. Then the real thing that's amazing is around poverty. We have functionally eradicated abject poverty in this planet in the last 100 years. 100 years ago, almost 9 in every 10 people on this planet were living in abject poverty. Today, that number is 1 in 10. Think about democracy. Less than 1% of the population had access to that about 100 years ago. Today, over half of the population are sitting in what we would see as democratic institutions or countries today. Then you can look at literacy. Again, a shocking inversion. 12% to 15% of the population could read about 100 years ago. Today, that number is almost 85%. Same with education, by the way. The numbers are almost mapped identically. Close to 15% of us are in a state on the planet where we don't have access to basic education, which was an inversion from where we were so long ago. This is, by the way, in 100 years we've done this. So the next question that always comes out, the next complaint, is you show people these numbers, and they turn around and they say, well, we're not better off because we work too hard. We've become slave to the device, slave to our job, slave to what we do every day, which, by the way, is bullshit. Turns out, that over the last 100 years across the developed world, we have halved the number of working hours of the average human being. You actually work less than somebody who was alive and working full-time on this planet in and around the turn of the century in the 1900s. So the question is, how did we get this so wrong? How is there this massive disconnect between how far we've come as human beings and our perception about where we are and where we live? Now, there are many answers to this question, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but I will. 
and I'll give you one <laughs> gross oversimplification, which is media. We have become a media illiterate society. We are not careful about what we read, we follow headlines, we have turned into a group of people that focus on the stories that are fed to us rather than the stories we need to dig and need to find. You can see that, by the way, in the election in the United States, the whole fake news disaster where typically more people were inclined to believe a headline that came from a fake source because it was sensationalist than something that came from a credible source like The Economist or The New York Times. So media literacy, if you want to think about in an era as we go forward what to teach your children, the most important thing to teach your children is media literacy, is how to input and take the information that we're absorbing. Now, let me talk about where we're going for the last minute or so. Because the real issue here is the institutions we live in. Education, government, religion, marriage, almost every school, everything you do touches an institution in your life. If you think about it, here's the problem. The institutions that we built on this planet, which were typically built by the 1%, or they were designed by a small percentage of the population, don't fit the people who live here anymore. The house doesn't work. There is huge disconnect going forward, and you can feel it every day in your life, whether it's kids having trouble at school and connecting, or elections and government. You can look at religion as one example. There is a massive disconnect and crisis coming between the institutions we created and the people that we've become. Now, one of the reasons for that is inversion. Again, this is an oversimplified look at it, but if you think about power on this planet, we developed institutions, whether it was a government or any other institution, including marriage, to work on a power pyramid, right? There was a prime minister, a CEO, a head of household, a head of school, a principal. It was always top down. But what's happening now because of the people we've become, because we're better educated and living longer and healthier, is we're now in this position where it doesn't work. And the power pyramid is turning. Now, we are not yet fully inverted. We're about here. And part of the thing that you feel, that innate change and that discomfort that goes on every day because you feel like you're living in a blender, is because we're living in this state of societal seasickness where we're not quite sure how we fit into the world that we actually created. And if you need a face for this, if you need somebody to look at and embody this whole spirit, it would be him, <laughs> the Pope very relevant here. So, <laughs> let me explain why. Pope Francis inherited a church, an organization, over 2,000 years old, that was declining at a rapid pace of the number of members that would attend. Hundreds of millions of dollars had been spent by the Catholic Church before the pontiff took over in 2013 to try to bring Catholics back to the organization. In fact, you might have seen some of these TV ads, they were all over the world, called Catholics Come Home, roughly about 150 million spent in advertising. When the new pontiff took office in 2013, he made a very clear realization. The house doesn't fit the people who live here anymore, and no amount of advertising is gonna change the disconnect between this old church and the institutions and the people that now live and walk on this planet. So he made some key decisions. He walked into the first meeting of the College of the Cardinals and said, we are changing this church. We're changing our views on homosexuality, on marriage, annulment of marriage. He went so far as to publicly say that Catholics no longer have to go to church to be considered good Catholics. You can imagine how that meeting went. And by the same token, he also changed 2,000 years of history where the Europe contingency controlled the Catholic Church to making it much more global. So if Pope Francis can take one of the oldest, most orthodox, difficult, and structured organizations in the world, there literally is no excuse for the rest of us. Thank you very much.